Are we recording? Yes. Okay. So today I thought it would be fun to do a paint out of the new batch of organic nickel violet PR257 into a variety of our binders. That is a very nice violet shade red. Yes. See, it's PR257, so technically it's a red. Pigment red 257. A beautiful violet shade red. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start with our silica flat, this one, okay. very matte, sort of like an acrylic wash. I have some in a cup already. Okay. So we're going to shake our dispersion. Add a little bit. Take our brush, stir it up. These are pigment concentrates. A little bit goes a long way. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Okay, here's our silica flat. So this is gonna, this is very creamy out of the, straight out of the bottle. Uh, you can add a little water to this if you want to have it be slightly more self-leveling, but really it's a, it's like an acrylic wash. So it dries with a little bit of tooth and it's gonna dry super matte. It looks like it might be an, ex an actually excellent um, exterior mural base. Yes, huh. it, it actually is. Oh, good. Um, it was designed as an exterior mur mural base. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to add a little thickener to it because we can thicken it up if we want, if we so choose. Ooh, my cap's a little clogged. Okay, thickener one, that's a rheology modifier. And a little dose of that. Having a pH reaction with the ammonia and the acrylic. Add a little more. Open the cap up a little more. Okay, a little dose more. That's about one to three percent addition of thickener to your binder. You let that spin that around. That looks Thirty good. seconds. Yeah, that looks so. As long as soon as it gets stiff, you don't want to go any further than that. Right, these are really high resin industrial strength binders. So and you, and you can't reverse the thickening, so not really. You can slowly really. work in some water. It's tricky, but you, if you go too far, it just goes into a solid lump. Exactly. Okay. But because these are nice high resin binders, that's not going to shrink a bunch on you. All right, let's do the next one. Okay, next one. Okay, let me get my brush wiped off, put it in the water. I got to go to a new brush since I have different binders. Okay, what's next? Urethane flat. Urethane flat. Yes, that's this one. Okay, move these over, get a little more sunshine on this. Grab that. Ooh, my paper's getting all dirty. Okay. Urethane flat, and yeah, I got some in my cup. Let's do our organic nickel violet in there again. A little bit, that might have been too much. Okay, urethanes are very sensitive, so you don't want to spin them around like I did with the silica. Yes, don't want to stir in air bubbles. Yeah, you don't want to stir in air bubbles. If you do, then you want to let it sit until the air bubbles pop out. But so we like to be nice and gentle with urethanes. Urethanes are self-leveling by nature. Ooh, so beautiful. That is. Mm. I wish I had a little more room on this paper. Yep. Ooh, that's pretty. That's, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful modernized urethane. Now I do have a urethane thickener also, so I'm gonna thicken this up, why not? This one's called Thickener 2. The other one was Thickener 1. Thickener 2 is technically a urethane thickener. So it's a urethane dispersion. Mm, urethane dispersion. <clears throat> yep. So this isn't going to get all stiff like the acrylics do, but it will give it a little more body. Yes, but it'll take forever to cure. Yeah. And that will <clears throat> also self-level. It's going to self-level with a little more body. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. So yeah, urethanes will dry to like a um, enamel-like kind of surface, although the urethane flat is going to be quite matte. We have a glossy one, which I will show you. Okay, I'm going to wipe it off. Is, it is so flat. Yes, it is so flat. Yeah, it really is. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next one. Flat white base. We don't very often sample this one. So this is just like a super duper white paint, all-purpose white paint. It's got a really heavy load. Ooh, so heavy of uh, titanium white in there. So that must be so flat. It's so flat. Wow. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> a little organic nickel 
violet in there. Okay, here we go. All right, so now we can see what it looks like white. So people buy this as like a, you can use this as like a high-end gesso if you want, or just a straight up uh, tint base, however you want to use it. Works it's, really well. Yeah. Oh, nice. Ooh, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful. That mixed, so um, organic nickel violet is a metal complex. Metal paper. complex, sorry. Yeah. Almost said the wrong thing. Um, so it's got that, because of the metal, it's got that like beautiful earthy kind of look to it. That's gorgeous. Um, okay, so why not? We'll thicken this too. I've got my thickener. I'll dose. So yeah, you can use this as a high-end gesso if you want. We like to say your painting is only as good as its bottom layer. Uh, but it's kind of an expensive way to go because this is not, this is all pure titanium white, not a bunch of uh, calcium carbonate, which is the chalk they normally put in gesso, which is what makes gesso cheaper. Right. But that's why it's so flat. And it's, su it's so flat and it's super white and it's super sturdy. So yeah, like one coat of the white usually will get you opacity. Beautiful. Beautiful. So nice. You getting all this on on the tape? I'm filming it. Okay. Yeah. Filming. Okay. So next. Next brush. Next brush. I'm using a lot of brushes. I'm gonna have a lot of brush cleaning after this. Okay, stand six. Stand six is our glossy acrylic that we're using as a replacement for our acrylic 60, our 60 and our 65, which are made from the same acrylic, actually. The 65 is just thickened. We haven't been able to get them for almost two years now because of the- uh, More than two. I think we're, oh we're pretty God. close to getting it back, which is it's pretty It's coming exciting. back soon. Yeah. It's coming back soon, we swear. It's pretty exciting. But yeah, the whole uh, raw material crisis and then, uh, you, know. you know, things happen. Yep. Okay, so, but this has been a pretty good replacement. This has kind of carried us through the stand six. Here it is in the bottle there. Yeah, that's not very flat, is it? No, this is this is not so flat. This is very glossy, super glossy. Okay, a little bit. Those first three are nice and flat though. Yes, super duper so flat. Yeah. Okay, stand six is nice and fluid. So this is a really fluid acrylic. That is a nice, that's yeah. a nice resin actually. It's been a good replacement. Now I definitely added enough pigment to this, but acrylics are milky when they're wet. We'll so. come back and take a picture. Yeah, we will. But for our purposes right now, I'll just oversaturate because I can, when I'm adding my own color, I can add as much pigment as I want. Although once you hit full saturation, it doesn't make a lot of sense to add more pigment. You're just kind of wasting it. But at least we you can... shouldn't be wasteful with pigments. No, you should never be wasteful with pigments. Right. Try not to be. Okay. So now we'll do our thickener with this. The thickener works a little better with the glossy acrylic than with the matte because every matte acrylic used to be a glossy acrylic and then has a powder added to it to make it matte. And then that powder is sort of in the way of this thickening process. So the straight resin glossy acrylic mm -hmm. thickens a little better, a little faster. You don't have to add quite as much thickener. So yep. bam. That's a high body, that's a heavy. Heavy body, it's like a heavy it, body. It's actually not like a heavy, but it, well, it's just a high. Heavy body gel. Yeah, it's a high, high resin. resin. Yeah. Um, so again, because this is such high resin, that's not going to shrink a whole bunch on you. I could get that just a teensy bit stiffer, I think. But, but it's going to keep that peak, which is kind of Yeah, cool. you do have to be really careful yeah. to not go overboard with the thickener, but I think I can get it a little thicker. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and then while we're here, I'm going to show you the thickener too I just used with the uh, urethane, because technically this is a urethane thickener. The way you can remember that That's is a urethane it, dispersion. Urethane yes. dispersion, sorry, but it also <coughs> acts as the thickener. We it call does. it thickener two. True. So the two you can use in addition to number one with acrylic. So I just added my thickener one. Now I can add my thickener two, and that is going to change it and make it sticky, draggy, honey like, kind of like oil paint, tar gel. Whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it. But you can kind of hear it and see the change that just happened there. That is a chemical reaction. Yes, that is a chemical reaction. Now I'm running out of room on my paper, but I'll try to. Surely planned for this. 
should have planned for this. You should have planned this. It's very hard well. to plan everything. Everything, life, yeah. Life, yeah. tough. Yeah, so this is like stretchy now, so I could like pull this around and make strings. Woo! Ooh. Ah. It's like Muppet poop. Oh, stop. <laughs> 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 oh, God. I think that's one of my passwords. Okay. And you're not going to keep a peek with that because it's just going to like no, level it's out. Just like, <clears throat> it's gonna go, oh. Yeah, it's got the urethane quality of leveling out. But you right. can see how it's like stringy. We can make this, this really stringy. stringy. If I was to work a little bit of more water into that, I could make it even more stringy. But you get the idea. Okay, next one. That would be really good for like, you know, paint. <clears throat> paint? Yeah. Yeah, it's good for paint. Sure. Okay. Moving right along, urethane 32. So this one is the one that really looks like enamel when it dries because it's gonna dry super glossy. Here we are, urethane 32. Yep. That's very clear, crystal clear when it's wet. Yep. Okay. Hard to make. And yeah, well, sensitive stuff. I am gonna add very little pigment to this because it's so clear. Highlight the transparency and whatnot. Yeah, <clears throat> in fact, I may have Added a little too much. I think, no, you'd be all right. All right. So if I wanted it to look kind of streaky, I wouldn't mix it in so much, but I want it to be a little more even. So I'm gonna keep mixing, but again, urethanes are sensitive. So we'd wanna not agitate it too much and make too many air bubbles. If you do make air bubbles, you let it sit. Okay. Ooh. There you go. And again, you can see that self-leveling property of the urethane, how it just... Whoosh. Yeah, well, that's actually, the, that's the parent structure for Jim Fleury urethane, so, mm. yeah. With a lot of things done to it to make it not Jim Fleury urethane. Yeah, this is very sturdy stuff. Um, oh, it's yeah. aliphatic, not aromatic. Well, typically yeah. the... Um, the urethanes you get in the hardware store are aromatic, so they yellow. So aliphatic means it's not going to yellow on you. It's like super duper awesome quality. Archival, beautiful. So that's going to dry to a really gorgeous, pristine, no brush stroke, enamel-like surface. It really sticks to stuff. Okay, I'm going to thicken it up a little bit. Yes. yes, it sticks to, this one sticks to metal, actually. And it uh, can be used outdoors. but also perfect for panels. So this one, it dries very hard. It also makes a great glossy varnish. Um, it dries very hard, so we don't recommend it for canvas. We have one that I'm not gonna sample today called Urethane 40, which we do recommend for canvas because it's super flexible. But this one, better for panel, uh, but it's, it's a gorgeous urethane. Okay, that's with the thickener. Okay. All right, and we are down to our last one, ultralight. Save the best for last. Well, I just happen to personally love ultralight. But it definitely has its fans. Okay. Has its fans. It does. Ultralight is <clears throat> glossy acrylic mixed with, oh, sorry, there was goop on my palette knife, which has gotten in here. Um, this is... Glossy acrylic mixed with micro glass balloons, which is what gives it all this body. It's kind of like marshmallow fluff. So you don't have to thicken this. It's already been thickened. We have just the right amount of thickener in there. Sure do. Sure do. So you can use that by itself or you can add color to it and make it paint. Uh, this is very white because the micro balloons um, opacify it and make it very white. So I have to add a little bit more pigment if I want to get a saturated color. I can go a little further. Yeah. Well, let me start with this. That looks pretty good, actually. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, there we go. Oh, add a little bit I didn't mix thoroughly. All right. Well, we can add a little bit more. Why not? We can do what we want. We can add as much color as we want. Right. Ooh. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, that's cool. Okay, and now for the heck of it, I'll add a little thicker. Let's see if I can get it just a tad bit stiffer. Sure did. And let's throw some thickener too in there. Make it stretchy. strings so that pretty much concludes our little organic nickel violet binder demonstration for today all right. thanks for joining us we'll see you again soon all right have a good day